Step 3. Define input distributions. As mentioned in Step 1, there are a number of uncertain values in this model involving the costs of the project and potential revenues it will produce. In a traditional analysis, you would simply enter a best guess for uncertain values or perhaps choose two or three typical or extreme values to see what happens. In at risk, you don't have to guess which values to try. At risk allows you to enter probability distributions in uncertain cells. These probability distributions indicate the possible values and how likely they are. The corresponding cells are called at risk input cells. In this model, the five values in the green cells are uncertain the investment cost, the year one revenue, the annual fixed cost, the annual revenue growth rate, and the annual variable cost as a percentage of revenue. There are many different probability distributions you can use for at-risk inputs. Here you will use two common distributions, triangular and normal. All distributions require you to supply parameters. Parameters are values that describe the probability distribution, such as its central location, its variability, and its shape. In a triangular distribution, the parameters are the minimum value, the most likely value, and the maximum value. The shape of this distribution is literally a triangle, with peak at the most likely value. No values below the minimum or above the maximum are possible. In a normal distribution, the parameters are the mean and the standard deviation. This is the traditional bell curve. The mean is the average or most likely value. The standard deviation is a measure of variability around the mean. Normal distributions are symmetric, meaning that values above the mean are just as likely as values below the mean. The parameters for this example have been listed in columns E to H for your convenience. They include the minimum, most likely, and maximum values for the three triangular distributions and the mean and standard deviation for the two normal distributions. Actually, it is not necessary to list these parameters on the worksheet, but it is often useful to do this for documentation. A natural question to ask is where these parameters come from. For example, even if you believe that a normal distribution is appropriate for the annual revenue growth rate, where do you get the mean and the standard deviation for this distribution? The answer might be based on historical data, it might be based on the opinions of experts, it might be based on your own subjective feelings about the future, or it might be a combination of all of these. This is always a difficult decision, but it is an important one. So you should try to choose parameters that are most in line with your knowledge about the particular situation. That is, you should always try to choose parameters that are realistic. To define an at-risk input, select the cell that is uncertain, such as investment cost. Click the Define Distributions button. Select the appropriate distribution from the thumbnail gallery, such as Triang for investment cost, and click Select Distribution. Define the parameters. At risk makes some guesses, but you usually override these. You can use cell references to choose the parameters, or you can enter the values directly in the Define Distribution window, as will be done in this example. Here is the triangular distribution for investment cost. Click OK to accept this distribution with these parameters. Now watch carefully as I enter distributions for the other inputs.
Note that there are now formulas in the green input cell. For example, the risk trying function is in the investment cost cell. Its three arguments are the parameters of this triangular distribution. There is actually a fourth risk static argument, which requires some explanation. You will note that there is a dice button on the at risk ribbon. It toggles between static values when white and random values when orange. There's orange, there's white. It is currently white, so you see $50,000 in the investment cost cell. The risk static parameter in the formula. If you toggle the dice button to orange, you will see random values in the input cells. In fact, if you press the F9 recalc key several times when the dice button is toggled to orange, you will see many different random values in the input cells. Watch. This latter behavior is the essence of simulation. Instead of getting a single value in an input cell, you get a range of values determined by the probability distribution you use. For example, based on the triangular distribution for the investment cost, the most likely value is indeed $50,000. But there is some probability that the investment cost will be greater than $80,000, and there is some probability that it will be less than $45,000. In fact, every value from $40,000 to $90,000 has some chance of occurring. You can decide whether you like the dice button to be toggled to static or random. However, it has no effect on the eventual simulation. Now it's your turn. Stop this video and enter distributions for the uncertain inputs using the parameters suggested. Then check your formulas in the green input cells.